What's up bros? Welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and BroGraph is not only a tutorial site now but it is also a site where you can get lots of things. Pretty soon we're going to be coming out with texture packs, model packs, and some like lighting packs and stuff like that. And we also have a podcast now. If you haven't heard our podcast, you should listen to it. We're doing it just about every week now, so that's fun. Um, now for this tutorial today, we're going to be doing the displacement deformer, and I've been really getting into using a lot of displacement for different things, but my preferred method of doing displacement is not to do displacement on textures, but to do displacement using displacement deformer, and I'll show you why it's advantageous. Um, this is kind of a beginning of a series talking about noise, because noise can be useful for lots of different things. And so this is number one, and let's get started. So I've got a blank Cinema 4D project right here, and I'm going to add a plane, and I'm going to make it, I don't know, maybe 20 inches by 20 inches just to start. It really doesn't matter that much. Um, I already have a, a HDR sky in here, uh, which we'll talk about later. And... Um, the first thing that I want to do on the plane is I want to make this a subdivision surface because usually when you're working with um, displacement <clears throat> you're actually subdividing quite a bit now we're not doing that with this I'm gonna leave it off for now so you can see the difference uh, we're not doing the subdivision within the texture itself we're gonna do our subdivisions by using the subdivision surface um, on the plane also I'm going to put a, a displacer deformer under the plane and now we're ready to get started and now usually you would create a texture and you would go to the displacement and then you would go in here and you would you would maybe add a texture or you would add uh, and, or you would change your settings your strength your height uh, you would do the subdivision level and um, the the thing that I don't like about that is that you really can't tell what you're doing with your displacement in the in the viewer in your in your window you can't see what's going on so you have to render in order to see the result and this gives you a lot more control in my opinion um, and today we're not going to be loading a texture per se we're actually going to be just playing with noise so in this uh, material that I have loaded here I'm gonna put it on the displacer and there's only one reason for that which is because in order to use this displace, displacer, we have to drag a tag into it. Now, if you click on the displacer, you can see under shading that it says uh, custom shader. We want to change that. You can change that to any of these things. In this case, I'm going to do color. You can really put the noise on any channel, and it really doesn't matter because it's just pulling in that information. Um, so... I'm going to see you can't drag the material itself into this texture tag that's why so that's why I put it in the displacer so I'm gonna drag it down here and it's gonna pull from the color channel and in the color channel I'm going to add under texture I'm gonna do a noise and you can see what happens here right away now if I hit play nothing is happening it's just a, a single simple noise I'm going to go down through the different pieces of this and you can see what it does. Now first of all you've got your color and the color is going to directly affect the height or uh, not the height I guess but the peaks and the valleys so if I'm changing the black you can see how that changes here. If I'm changing the white you can see it changes the the peaks it brings them down but I'm going to keep that kind of at its extreme because I'm going to adjust that in different ways. You've got your random seed, which will change your noise just at random, of course. <clears throat> you got your global scale. So I could drag this way up and make it very, very simple. Or I could take it down to like two, and then you can see what's going on here. Um, now, the first thing that you'll notice is how jaggedy this is, and that's because we don't have very many subdivisions. You could go in and change your subdivisions if you are using something like a plane you could you could bring this up and change how smooth it is that's one thing that you can do with this but in this case right now really we just need to turn on the subdivision surface and so now you can see we're getting all sorts of cool looking peaks and valleys here so i'm going to go back into the texture itself and back to my noise 
and <clears throat> I'm going to change this back to 100, uh, well, maybe 50. I'm going to see a little bit more stuff going on here. Now you've got your relative scale that will also let you adjust your scale uh, relatively. And then uh, you've got animation speed and under animation speed, you can speed it up here and you can see it's undulating. I love that word. So this is undulating right now. And really all that it's doing is adjusting that noise. It's moving that noise. It's animating that noise around, making the different shades of black and white move up and down, change gray values. And so that gives it that undulation up and down. You'll notice it's not moving left to right or forward and backward. It's not going on X or Z. And um, we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's look at loop period, because this is actually really cool. If you wanted to make waves that looped, you can type in a number here and you could actually make it loop. Now, the other day I was looking at this, I'm like, well, what does loop period mean? It doesn't say anything really. I figured it was number of frames and I typed it in and it wasn't working. Loop period is how many seconds, which I find kind of odd, but that's fine. So we've got three seconds in the loop period right now. And by default, the 90 frames at 30 frames a second going in uh, inside of cinema. So you can see when I get to frame 90, the thing just kind of loops. And I think technically we would want to put like 2.9 because it would loop a frame. Oh, maybe it doesn't loop a frame. I don't know. That looks right to me though at three. If it's, if it's got a delay, uh, you could just change. You really could just change uh, to like 89 frames. I believe. Let's look and see if you have the loop point. See, that looks correct to me now. So it's at three seconds. So we don't do that double frame at the end when it loops back around. It looks nice. Okay, so uh, movement. Now this is what I wanted to get into here. You've got X, Y, and Z, but in this case we're only working with the X and we're working with the Z. So um, I'm going to turn the speed up and I'm going to turn the movement up and you can see it's going all over the place right now. Uh, that's because my speed is way too high. I'm going to do 0.1 and now you can see here, even if I did 0.05, you can see what's going on is the movement is moving in X. It is moving from right to left. Now I could do two and you can see it speeds up a little here. That's how many inches a second basically that is going. I could do negative two if I want it to go the other way, which is cool. And if I want to do this going the other direction, Z, I can do it that way. I got negative two and I got two this way. All right, so there is movement. So that is, that is fun. Now if we add the, uh, well, we have the animation already. Um, y isn't gonna really do anything in this case. Um, it's not it's not relative of course to, to moving along the plane um, now the other thing we've got here is the low clip and the high clip now if I bring the low clip down you can see it's kind of flattening out the lows and which that kind of gives a cool look in itself right now if I do the same thing in the other direction I can do the highs and I can get like a like a, a clipping going on here at the top and flatten out the peaks and that's also cool looking and you can look at this from different angles it's really fun to play with noise and see what you can come up with now if I bring that back up we're gonna look at brightness and contrast brightness of course is how bright that uh, noise is gonna be you see you've got the noise here and if I were to make that brighter it would go up all the way like everything goes up in general because all those gray values are going up same thing if I go down all those gray values are going down it starts crushing it now contrast of course is going to be the con like more or less contrast between the white and black so if I bring it up it's actually going to kind of expand the distance between the peaks and valleys or if I bring it down it's going to do the opposite right so that covers that right there. And now I'm going to show you how to do a couple other things. First of all, before I leave this, I do want to show you there's a million different types of noise and they're a lot of fun to play with. And they're going to make things look different in here. And it's fun to go through and see what you can do with these different types of noise. So 
So that is fun as well. And now I will take this back to just regular noise. Now I'm going to show you what you can do with layers. Because if you're making something cool like this, but you want to have a little more control over it, you can add all sorts of multiplication to this. Um, I'm going to add a layer, for example. And so I've, I have this initial noise right here. I'm going to go to Shader, and I'm going to create a gradient on top. Now, right now, this gradient has taken over. Uh, I'm going to change it, though, to circular. So we have this cool little deal right here. Now, I'm going to bring this in just a little bit and make like a bowl. So we've got circular going here, and we want to add that basically to the noise. And so all we do is do a multiply, and all of a sudden you can see we've got the same thing from before, but then we got the gradient going on top of it. So that gives us a lot of control over this. So you can see by using black and white values and multiplying things, you can get some really cool... Um, results here and so here's the other thing about this if you do this as displacement there's no texture on what you're working with and the cool part about that is then you can create a different texture of any sort and change it and do whatever you want with it and put it on there and you're not having to mess with the displacement that's all kind of separate and so you could put a whole bunch of different textures on here do whatever you want you're not worrying about that part of it the other thing is if you're working in something like um, octane or you're working in something like v-ray it kind of applies the same way because now you can put an octane material on top of your object I'm gonna make like a blue octane material here and hit stop so this can catch up with itself and then when I render you can see what's going on here I turn it on hello there we go now it's going to be a little slower because it's trying to render out here, but you can see what's going on. I'll turn off the subdivision. Maybe it will go a little faster. There we go. Now you can see there that um, it doesn't matter what kind of material you're using or what render engine you're using because you can just do this and, um, and, and put any material on there. It doesn't matter. Now in part two of this, I'm going to be going into the sound effector and how you can attach sounds into this so you can create kind of a cool looking uh, EQ thing to go along with it. And so look for that coming later on in the week. I'm Dave Koss. Thanks for watching. Um, you can rate us on iTunes if you listen to our podcast. We certainly would love that. Leave a review or something like that. Um, also, subscribe to us, please, please, on YouTube because that gets us out there. That gets our name out there and um, helps us keep doing our thing. And uh, we sell t-shirts now, BroGraph. It says no BroGraph, no MoGraph. That's on our website, BroGraph.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Uh, we've been periscoping and all sorts of stuff. Of course, YouTube, like I said earlier, and BroGraph.com. And that's about it. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, have a good one. Later, bros. BroGraph.com, an online resource for learning critical components of Cinema 4D and After Effects, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another BroGraph motion graphics tutorial. We give you professional, time-saving tips, shortcuts, and lessons that help give you an edge over your fellow designers. Not only this, but our new BroGraph talks help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join us for live sessions, check out our crazy Cinema 4D experiments, or just watch our Fun with BroGraph series, where we show you practical applications for techniques learned in previous tutorials. Do this from the beginning, and your client is going to respect that, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to respect your time. Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead, all with a slight dash of dry humor peppered in. Real nice banana. BroGraph.com, your source for tutorials that will help you thrive in the motion graphics industry. Don't just play around with Cinema 40 and After Effects, master it, and make money by becoming indispensable at your workplace. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials.
It's pretty good, I guess. 